Okay, so uh, in this lecture, uh, I will uh, give you more details explanation of complexity and I have taken an example of Fibonacci number. Okay, Fibonacci or Fibonacci, someone pronounce it like that. So <clears throat> I guess all of, uh, all of you already know what are Fibonacci number. Fibonacci number is first number is the sequence. It's a sequence one, first element is one, second element is one, and then you have to sum up previous two numbers. So it will be two, it will be two plus one, three, then it will be three plus two, five, and then it will be five plus three, eight. So in this way. So now the question is suppose you are asked, find. And the Fibonacci number. Okay. So, what is this? This is the first Fibonacci number, this is the second Fibonacci number, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and this way. And you have to find out an F1 number. For example, let's say n equal to 50. So you have to return 50 F1 number, whatever it may be. So we have to write some program. As I told, F1 number always computed by summing up the previous two numbers in this sequence. Okay. So uh, if I write, a, I am writing directly the uh, Recursive algorithm, let's say, first put a name. Okay. I'm writing Kibo for Fibonacci. Let's say we have to find out Fibonacci number for n. Okay. How will you write? So, first we will check these two elements are given. First two elements are always given. The first number is 1, second number is 1. And rest of the numbers will be common. So we can simply write a program if n is less than equal to 2 return one. Okay. Return what? n minus 1 plus the program will work. Okay. Now, have you seen these things? I am calling function, the same function inside the program. Okay. What is this called? This is recursion. When you are calling the same function inside the function, it will call recursion. Okay. So how it will work? If you pass, let's say, n equal to 5, what will happen? We have to compute this function. Uh, the compiler will start computing. Fibo 5. Okay. And this 5 will be checked. If, is it less than 2? No, it is not less than 2, so it will not return 1. So it will come to the else part. And when it will come to the else part, it will get two Fibonacci call. So first call is Fibo n minus 1. Okay. And the second call is Fibo n minus 2. So it is going to call Fibo 4 and Fibo 3. Be careful, recursion will not work in this way. It will, it will actually not call both the function. It will call the first function, Fibo n, and the program handle will, uh, it will wait till the result comes before processing this thing. So it will not appear in the program stack. Hmm. I will, in some uh, another lecture, discuss the program stack, how it will exactly work. 
But for the time being, let's understand. I will call this term this. This will again call pivot three and pivot two. This will call pivot two and this will call pivot one. Okay. So this will again call two two and two one. Okay. Now this two one and two two satisfy this condition. If n less than equal to two. Okay. And it will return one. So this will return one. Okay. This will return one. This will return one. And both the, of them return one, so previous two elements are already computed. Now, pivot three will return one plus one. It will return two. Pivot two is one, so it will return one. So, two plus one, it will, it will become three, so it will return three here. And in this side, it will return one. It will return one, and the total sum will be two, so it will return two. So what pivot five will return? It will return three plus two, five. So let's check. But what is the fifth Fibonacci number? One, two, three, four, fifth. Fifth Fibonacci number is five. So we will get this result. Okay. But now. Come to the complexity. How much computation is required to compute this problem? Okay. If we are going through the RAM model, I will also discuss this thing in another lecture: the RAM model, pointer model, and Python model. Okay. These, these are model of computation. For the time being, uh, most of the algorithm so far is developed on RAM model, pointer models, and Python models are not used in uh, the books literature. So in RAM model, it is assumed every instruction is one operation. Okay. Load or store means you are reading something or you are writing something. Yeah. That will be one operation. Okay. And addition multiplication are one operation. So you, you, you may disagree with these things. How can the addition and multiplication be of same cost? That is not same. But in the RAM model, it is assumed all the instruction of the same. So all these are a constant time operation. So how many operation is it is performing? Q1 and Q1. It is performing this line is performing one operation. This one line is performing one operation. This is the order of one. This is the order of one. Okay. And let's assume we have to compute uh, the complexity of recursion. So I am uh, telling you how to compute. Let's say assume that I don't know. If all these lines are simply instruction, we could have there was for loop and while loop we can compute how many times for loop is uh, executing. But in case of recursion, how to compute? So let's assume I don't know. Since I don't know, I will assume. Let's assume that the complexity of this function is T n. Okay. So this is T n. This instruction one operation. This instruction one operation and this instruction. What will be cost of this? If this is Tn, cost of this will be Tn minus 1 plus Tn minus 2. Okay. So what is the total cost? Total cost is Tn equal to Tn minus 1 plus T n minus plus order of 1. So for the time being, I can ignore this. Why? Because in order notation, uh, these are bigger term and this is constant factor. 
So we can ignore this thing. So let's remove this one. Now what is the complexity? Means we have to solve this recursive equation. Okay. This look like very uh, difficult, but if we are not able to directly solve this thing, we can estimate what will be the complex. Okay. So what we can do? Let's say I have replaced this t n minus 2 by t n minus 1. So I am writing one more function, let's say t1 n equal to t1 n minus 1. This is different, this is not t1. But n minus one. Okay. Which one is bigger in the right side? Which one is bigger? Obviously, this name the written equation is bigger, or we can write this as two t one n minus. Okay. So which one have more complexity? This one have more complexity. So we can write T n less than T1 n. Right? Because this right side is bigger than T1 n. So T1 n has more complexity. Now solve T1 n. How can we solve T1 n? T n equal to 2 T n minus 1. So you can see the variable size is decreasing by 1 in every step. So if I write this equal to 2 into 2 t1 n minus 2, then I can add one more 2 and one more decrement, one more 2, one more decrement. Okay. So when this will be 1 or 2? We already know the value of t1 and t1, which is 1. So if we write n minus 1 here, okay. And then it will be also n minus 1, okay. But this value is 1, okay. So this value is 1, not equal to. This then is 1. So it is actually 2 to the power n minus. Okay, so we can solve t1 and the value of the t1 is 2 to the power n minus 1. Okay, so this tn is actually less than equal to 2 to the power n minus. Okay. Now similarly. If I make one more function, let's say t2, t2 n equal to, now what I will do, t2 n minus 2 or n minus 2 plus t2 n minus 2 and compare this with the Fibonacci sequence, complexity of Fibonacci. Now this t2 n is less than the Fibonacci because both the term are smaller. This t n minus one is replaced by t n minus two, so this is smaller term. So the right side is smaller. So this is basically t two n. Now we can solve the t two n. How t two n equal to two t two n minus two. Okay. Now in the same way. If we reduce the value of n minus 2, okay, so the, it will be n minus 4 and it will be 4. So to the power 2, it will be n minus 4. Then to the power 3, it will be 2 to the power 3. So this is n minus 6, so 2, 2, 2, 2, 2 will reduce and this power will increase. So, after some step, we will get, we will reach either T1 or T2. I don't know whether N is uh, odd or even. Okay. So based on, based on whether N is odd or even, we will reach T1 or T2. Okay. But whatever the value, we will come to, to the power 
n minus 1 by 2. Okay, and this part will become 1. So I can say now I got the value of T2, T2n. So we can write this T2n is equal to T2 to the power n minus 1 by 2. Now both these are exponential and Tn lies in between. So the complexity of this will be ex exponential. 2 to the power it will be greater than 2 to the power n by 2. Okay, which is very large and computer suddenly most inefficient. It will take a lot of time. So that is the recursive version of Fibonacci. But what's wrong in this recursive function? Why it takes so much time? You can check in this tree. We are computing this part, Fibo 3. We are computing this part twice. We are computing this part, this part, okay, and this part. So this diagram is for very small number 5. If you are taking 50, then there will be lot of repetition in the computer. So why? Why should we compute FIBO3 twice in the same program? So here comes the most crucial technique called memorization. You can simply compute this Fibonacci program using for loop that will take order of n time, okay? But it is not, uh, you, you can do that things, but it is desired that you learn recursion and you solve the things with recursion, okay? And the target is to write efficient recursion. In uh, little later, we will see, we will solve this Fibonacci with some other recursion which will, which will give us log n complexity. Okay. I am coming to, the, to that part, but this is exponential complexity of the Fibonacci program. What I have written here, if we add memorization, so memorization is, it is a table. Okay. It is a table. We we'll store the value. Once it is computed, we we'll store the value. So this recursion will call, we we'll store the value of FIBO1. FIBO1 is 1. We we'll store the first time the FIBO2 is called, we we'll store the value of FIBO2. Next time this same program is called, we will not compute this again. We will look up the table and put the value. So now we will compute FIBO3, which is 3. Okay. So that will be computed here, first time FIBO3 is called, when the next time FIBO3 will be called in the right recursion, then we will just look up the table and put the value, we will not compute it. So this portion will not be called. This value is already there in the table, so we will go for table lookup and put this. Okay, so in this way we will compute 5 and we will compute 8 and dot. So this memorization process, it will be little bit more usage of memory, but it will reduce the computer. So a recursion with memorization is a very, very, very powerful technique. And it is used in lot of application in system programming, network, cryptography, artificial intelligence, reinforcement learning, everywhere. Whenever you are appearing in some technical challenge round, you will get a lot of problem. If you can write a good recursion with memorization, your code will give you the faster result and you will win the computer. Okay, so this recursion with memorization is mostly recommended. It will give you the linear time. Why? Because the computation is uh, getting a linear. Okay. We are just looking up the table in constant time putting the value. So all the functions are computed just only one. So it will give you linear complexity. Okay. So recursion will give you exponential complexity, this recursion, not all recursion. 
remember this recursion with memorization will give you linear time complexity okay now i am coming to one more version so this where i will use where the program will be computed in logarithmic complexity okay which one is bigger log n or n obviously log n is much more smaller Okay, so let's come to let's say a my Fibonacci number is F n. Okay, and n Fibonacci number is F n, n minus one Fibonacci number is F n minus one. Okay, so first Fibonacci number is F1, second Fibonacci. Okay. What I am, I am doing? Hmm. This is one. I know. This is also one. I know. Now we are creating a small matrix. Okay. Let's say one, 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 zero. This is a two by two matrix. Okay. And I have this vector Fibonacci 2 plus Fibonacci. What I will get if we do matrix vector multiplication, this is 1, this is 2. So, what I will get? How matrix get multiplied? Row into column. So, first element of the first row with first element of the first row. Then second element of the first row with second element of the first row. So multiplication will give us F2 plus F1. What will be the dimension of this multiplication? This is 2 cross 2, 2 cross 2 and this is uh, 2 cross 1. So 2, 2 will cancel out. So it will be 2 plus 1. Resultant matrix will have 2 plus 1. Okay, that is, that is the rule of matrix multiplication. And what will be the second column? The multiplied vector F2 into 1 plus F1. So it will be only. Now what is the meaning of F2 plus F1? This is F3. So we can write F3. Okay, so if I rewrite this from right side to left side, it will look better. So you can say F3 F2 equal to this into this. Right? Got it up to this? This is very simple. Simple 2 by 2 matrix multiplication. Now repeat this thing. Okay, now come to the old problem. We need to compute a thing. Enough to one at the end. So let's take this vector fn, fn minus 1. What I will get? This is, this is also a recursion. Let's write the recursion in terms of n. So I have this matrix 1, 1, 1, 0. Okay. And what will be the value of this function? If n minus 1, if n minus 2. Is that right? Yeah. Here there is 3, we got 2. That uh, there is 2, we got 1. Okay, so n will become n minus 1, n minus 1 will become n minus 2. Now repeat this process. Okay, let's say, let's put some name of this matrix. Let's say 
A is the matrix or I can write M because M should be better with the matrix. So M equal to 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0. Okay, this is the matrix. Now Fn equal to this equal to 1, 1, 1, 0 square into I reduce this n value n minus 2 f n minus 3 okay and repeat this this is also recursion fn is written this into this then this into this okay in this way how much long so we'll get i'm writing in terms of a get to the power n into f2 f1 okay a to the power n into f2 f2. So I have to compute Fibonacci number n. What I got? A to the power n. So I have to just compute a to the power n. To compute enough Fibonacci number, I have to compute a to the power n. Everything lies in this. How to compute a to the power n? You will say matrix multiplication of two cross two sides. It will be constant time. Four operation there it will require four operation so it will be constant. Okay, so you, you can say a into a into a. Okay, in this way you will compute n times. It looks like we have order of n complexity, but not. We can make it even faster. How? Why should we compute all the a? Okay, we'll, what we will compute? We already have a. The next thing we will compute is square. Next thing we will compute a to the power 4. Next thing we will compute a to the power 8, a to the power 16. Okay, in this way. So these are the multiplication. So now if someone asks, give me the 13 Fibonacci number, how is it written? What is this 13? 13 is basically 8 plus 4, 12 plus 1. So we already have this thing. So this is my new memorization. Okay. This is my new memorization. We we'll store all this value. Use the lookup table and for every number you can compute the binary representation and what are the two score representation. So in two's power representation, you put the value from table data. And you will get the nth Fibonacci. Okay. It will involve the matrix addition of constant number. Okay. Not constant number, log n number. So this is this addition it takes log n and this computation will also take log n. Okay, because this is a geometric series, we are not computing all the value, it will take log n time. So this complexity will become order of log n. Right? So this was a simple problem for Fibonacci number, but we will use this type of techniques, a lot of computation and make the computation even faster. Okay. So coming to the next lecture with some more beautiful stuff.